that's us going live now so we are live um on channel four please do not swear <laughs> you know me too well Louise. <laughs> and i've shut my front door so hopefully we won't hear the uh two o'clock um inverness to queen street station rushing past and i haven't got my dishwasher on or the washing machine which has happened so we've got two people join us already so good afternoon um uh, we'll just give it another couple of minutes and see who joins. But this will be recorded anyway, so you've got an asset that you can share with everybody. Definitely, yes. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll kind of reiterate at the end of this where, where that will be posted so that people can can refer back to it. So we, we have a new website that we're using now for, for all teachers in South Lanarkshire. So it's been really good to, to be able to put everything in one place, a kind of one-stop shop. Um, so all the live streams and the recordings will, will get popped in there. So, yeah. Excellent. So we've got 34 people joined us now. So that's probably oh, us about time. So should we make a start? I think so, because the sun is shining, Louise, and who knows how long we'll stay. <laughs> OK, so good afternoon and welcome, everyone, to the SLC ThingLink webinar. Um, I am Karen McLeod, the Digital Education Support Officer, and I'm so pleased to welcome back a friend of South Lanarkshire, uh, Louise Jones. So a number of you will have maybe remembered that last year uh, Louise did a lot of work with us on G Suite for Education, a whole week's worth of webinars we did that that time. So great to have her back today um, to introduce us to ThingLink. I know we've got some really creative teachers in South Lanarkshire, so I'm um, excited to see what they're going to do with this wonderful new platform, Louise. So over to you. Oh, thank you, Karen. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed um, spending a whole week in South Lanarkshire uh, last year for your National Digital Learning Week, and I'm really excited to be back with you. Please do go ahead and uh, put any comments into the chat there. Um, I've already put a Google Doc with lots of examples on that I'm going to share with you, and also the decks from today as well. So I am going to share my screen with you now. So hopefully you should be able to see my screen. Great. There we go. And oh, no, I've lost it. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. So hopefully you can all see these slides. Um, and as I said, I have put those in the chat for you. So I'm just going to give you a bit of background about ThingLink. Um, some of you will have come across ThingLink before. It's been around about 10 years. It's quite a mature ed tech tool, um, which is a long time <laughs> in the kind of current grand scheme of things. So ThingLink was invented um, by Ula. I'm going to show you a picture of Ula in a short while. And it is a visual learning solution for schools, but we're used a lot in workplaces as well for e-learning um, and also um, businesses might use it on their websites to advertise their products or editorial features. So you can see on the picture there in front of you that you can put clickable hotspots in and we're going to have a look at those today. We are also a Microsoft Gold partner and this is really important for me to explain because being a partner with the te big technology people brings us additional benefits. So for example, with Microsoft, when you click on the icons, which we're gonna have a look at, we've got immersive reader built into those icons. And that means that you've got instantly a way of making an image or a video accessible because on those hotspots, your text will then um, be able to be translated in, into over 80 different languages. You'll be able to change reading preferences and you'll even have text to speech on your text tags. We also are an app within Teams. So for those of you that are using Microsoft Teams, um, you can click on the ThingLink app and um, create ThingLinks within your Teams channels. We are also a Google for Education partner. And what that means is that you can use it with Shared Classroom. So you can create a ThingLink, share it to your classroom and select whether it's an assignment or an announcement. And you can actually design a workflow around that. You'll see at the bottom there that we won the UNESCO ICT in Education Prize. And that was just for a lovely piece of work. What that was for was ThingLink was um, 
used to help young women develop entrepreneurial skills in hard to reach places. They weren't attending school and ThingLink was a video interview with a business advisor. And the young girls in Saudi Arabia could follow the interview, click on different hotspots, learn about it. Um, and it was piloted in seven schools across Saudi Arabia. So, so that was one of the reasons why it won the UNESCO IC team prize, which is just fantastic. So um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, what I just wanted to show you is a bit about what is ThingLink, some of the challenges we can help to solve and some really nice examples particularly that's bringing up over the last few months and you can see here in this picture that the pupils here have been outdoor learning they've been taking images of their um the outdoors of their school or a park where they've been visiting and then in school they've actually through an active learning task and a project they've been recreating the outdoors in their classroom and then what they've been able to do is to add in those images that uh, are tagged onto that 360 image that's been taken of their classroom display. And then that 360 ThingLink experience can be embedded onto a school website. It could be put onto a Google project site, for example. And it just means that they can share that whole learning experience with parents and carers. So on these slides, what you'll see is um, this video when you, you go into the slide deck and you can have a copy of these slides. But what I thought it'd be quite cool to do is, is if I give South Lanarkshire that video that I've embedded, which is a what is ThingLink video, uh, you could turn it into a ThingLink and then put your own hotspots in it. So you could have South Lan examples and... Um, uh, other support links, for example. So again, it's, it's a really nice tool that's got quite a versatile um, number of ways in which you can use it. So ThingLink offers you a really easy way to create really interactive media, um, virtual tours, really popular at the moment for transitions. And for example, in the healthcare industry, we, it, we've been used for things like dementia patients have had the interior of their kitchen and they can see what the um, appliances might do. We've seen it used for the insides of a 360 of an ambulance, for example, for training that's been used to teach ambulance drivers and paramedics, although they haven't been in the ambulance yet. So lots of great uses and it's used by 30 million people globally every month. We are a very small team. There's just myself and Ula who are the, the women in the team. And um, this is Ula's baby. Um, she developed it, as I said, 10 years ago. And at that time she was taking lots of um, counsel from um, and consultation from people like Jimmy Wales who was setting up Wikipedia at the time. And on the Google doc that I shared with you, it was um, in the red banner, there's the history of ThingLink. And it's really fascinating to see Ula's vision um, become so successful um, a, a, as well as the kind of journey that she went on, which is just fascinating. And we actually had a, a 10th birthday earlier this year. So it was developed um, with a real strong education foundation. And Ulla was studying for her PhD at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And she looked at how Vygotsky's theory could be applied. And that theory was that our cognitive skills develop with interaction um, with our environment. And that environment can be physical or virtual. So she looked at how we can bring environments to life. For me, um, it was a I, I love the product. Um, it's genuinely a pleasure to work with Ula and the team on ThingLink, and it is loved by everybody. And um, it plays nicely with everybody, as you see. And we play with Microsoft and Google and, and work on iPads as well. So it's it's genuinely a tool that um, has, has a real kind of education philosophy and grounding. As I mentioned, iPads there, so ThingLink will work across the cloud on any device. So I'm on a Chromebook today and it will work nicely on your PC. It will work nicely on your Mac. It will even work on your phone or your iOS device. 
Um, it'll even work with 360 images and uh, Google Cardboard, for example. So your 360 experiences can be played with VR. Um, we also partner with Class VR. I'll be really upfront and honest with you and say that the iPad app of ThingLink isn't very good. Um, it's not often you hear people in a company say that. But the, the good thing is, is that ThingLink on the iPad browser works fantastically and you get additional functionality. So with an iPad, if you're going on the browser and type in thinglink.com and go into your account, you can easily use your iPad to click, take a picture, it'll upload as your base image to your ThingLink. Or if you wanted to add a video into a tag, you can do that directly from your iPad or your phone as well. Really nice examples. As I mentioned, we partner with Class VR as well, so you can create your own expeditions. So ThingLink works with images, and that can be a photo, or it could be an infographic like the one that I've just shown you here, which is one of my favorite early examples. But you can also upload 360 images, video, and 360 video as well. And this is Manor Park Primary in Aberdeen. And they've been using um, um, the Children's Parliament Imagineers to create a poster of young people's requirements of the expectations of the adults in the, in the community. Um, and this poster was just so popular. It was things that the children expected the adults to do um, in respecting their rights as well. And it was actually Jenny Watson at Education Scotland that pointed me towards them. Um, and the other, other kind of example that went parallel to this when I was thinking about ThingLink was the sketch notes that we were seeing Education Scotland um, produce after the inspections. And I don't know about you, but I was thinking, well, you know what, these are great, but sketch notes only really work if you've been at a conference and then you get the sketch note afterwards. It's like a a summation of, of the conference, to me, they're quite jumbled words. Um, and I find it difficult to kind of understand. And, and they could be brought to life, and they're not very accessible. So what I did was I contacted Manor Park Primary, and asked them how we could um, try and bring this to life. And, and this is how the project started, really. So hopefully you can see this. So this was the original poster that they created. And then what we wanted to do was we wanted to turn it into a thing link so that the pupils could then bring it to life with their own thoughts and impressions. And then parents who maybe struggle to understand it or adults that struggle to understand it could see this was accessible. So what they've done here is they've just added in some text labels and this also opens up into immersive reader. So this can uh, have text to speech, but what you can also do with this is then translate it into over 80 different languages. I'll just choose Dutch there. And of course you've now got text to speech with that language change as well. You can see you can hop between the two. And you can also change the reading preferences um, and change the colors of the text as well. So if you want to do it in different ways. So instantly you've got what was a poster, which was a JPEG of a poster that has now got additional points in that parents could then access this through the school website, etc. But then they went one further and they they started, I haven't got the video playing on this tag, but what they started to do was to create little videos. And this student is saying, I feel calm and safe, you know, all these things that just suddenly brought it to life. And this was the very first example um, of the work that I was doing with ThingLink. And this could even be a QR code embedded onto the poster so parents and carers could, could see it as well. So a really nice example there. So the next example that I just want to show you is one where you can now see some of the different tags that you can add into ThingLink. And here you can see this is not an image, it's a 360 image that I've just uploaded to ThingLink. And I'm going to show you now the different types of tags that you can add. 
So you saw that that one um, was a plain text tag in the previous poster. And with a text tag, it's actually a text and media tag. You can add in these little images at the side and they'll play as a carousel. You can add in text. You can even add in call to action buttons as well. And it's this text that will open up into immersive reader, which is always there. Now, this is a combination of text and images, but you can put any media in here. So this one here, for example, is a talking emoji that someone's uploaded um, from their phone. But you can also embed different tags. So for example, here, I've got a Google form, which I've just embedded into, and my Google's popped up there, um, which I've just embedded into my tag, which is a different tag type, it's an embed tag. So you've got about four or five different tag types. So you can have text and media, you can have plain text labels, you can have embed tags, so you can embed different things. Um, I've also got here a scratch animation that I've created, which I've embedded into my tags too. There we go, that's just loading there. And there's a scratch cat. Um, and I've also embedded Padlet and Flipgrid and even things like a chart from a Google Sheet. And this is a live chart and that would update, of course, if my data was updated. Uh, updated in the sheet that I'm working from. You can also add in audio into these tags. So for this one here, this is an image tag, uh, um, media tag, and that plays uh, audio as well. And that's just me recording my voice into it. So that pops up. And then of course you can just add photos in if you want and they'll play as a carousel. So that is all linked on the deck. So that's just the range of different types of tags you can add. There's the text and media tag, the embed tag. And the last one I've not mentioned is the tour tag, which is where you can start linking all of your thing links together to create those tours. I'm going to stop there and just come back and see if there's any questions. Karen, any questions there? Was that helpful? Was that a good start? Yeah, that was really great and a great kind of overview of, of what it looks like. So I think the, the first question people ask is, well, what, what do you mean? What is this thing, thing link? So it's great for people to get an idea of what it can do. Um, so we, we don't have any questions in the chat yet. So don't be shy. Okay. Post, make sure you, you post if you've got something you want to ask. But I think the thing for me that you were saying about um, the accessibility of this, I think is really important. So immersive reader and that ability to bring a poster to, to life in a way that's accessible for all learners, whether it's a, a language issue or, you know, um, literacy or even just someone who's more of a visual learner. Uh, I think that's really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what's been really helpful, I think, over the last few months is thinking about transition and virtual tours. And I'll show you some examples that are just incredible. So with ThingLink, you can upload your image and you can upload your 360 image and people have maybe heard of using 360 cameras but you can actually use the google street view app on your phone and take 360 images and use those you can upload a video and for what's happened recently with coronavirus crisis um, we have lifted our limit on the video size that you can upload so you can upload a 10 gigabyte video as your base media and then put in your tags and the reason we did that was because we heard from a number of parents and carers and and teachers that were saying they were struggling to use youtube to um post videos and send them out parents were getting annoyed because kids were ending up down this kind of rabbit warren of youtube and videos and appropriateness and local authorities were struggling because they um didn't want all the teachers to have YouTube accounts. So now with their ThingLink accounts, any of your teachers can upload a 10 gigabyte video and then they've got a link that they can share out. So it saves you having to use YouTube. So some some really, really nice uses. Yeah, there. That, that's really useful for people to know. And, and I see Leanne has, has just posted that for her, she feels that's going to be really beneficial for her children returning to 
to what's going to be a vastly changed school setup. So that's that's interesting. So it's not just about thinking about what your school looked like pre-lockdown. It's thinking about what it might look like come August and maybe giving kids a little bit of a, bit of a preview to that. So that's a really nice idea, actually, yeah. how you, you use this tool for that. Definitely. So I think it'd be quite a nice idea if I just jump back in and show you a few more examples. And we're actually going to then, um, I've got a, an image ready to upload just to show you how easy it is um, to create oh, yeah. your own thing links. So I'm just going to uh, remove you, Karen. Sorry, that sounds awful. And um, I'm going to share my screen again. Great. And this time I want to share a Chrome tab because I want to show you that one. So there we go. So hopefully you can see this. Um, and this is, uh, there's quite a few of these kind of popping up now, which has been virtual classrooms. And um, this is Amanda Picard in Fife. And she's used it as a kind of choice board. And what she's got here, I hope you can hear the audio. I'm not sure if I click the audio, but you can um, hear she's got She's got a talking Travis who's introducing the sentences and the task. So, you know, you can upload GIFs, you can upload videos to those tags, so you can easily have that kind of social presence and connection um, with your learners. And, and the feedback from Amanda's P1s has just been fantastic. And parents have said they've absolutely adored um, seeing the animals, but also it just makes it really engaging. And that's the point, isn't it? It has to be social. And, and what Amanda's doing in her classes, um, and I know that we talked a lot about this last year with South Lanarkshire, was this importance of creating a, a culture of innovation with the use of technology. And I've kind of scrapped that a bit now and said, what's more important is creating this culture of connection um, with the learners and parents and carers in your communities. And one way of doing that with everything that's going on is by being really socially rich in the materials that you're making for people to engage with. And, and this is why it's just such a lovely example. So yeah, a really nice one there. And again, this is all in the Google Docs, so you can um, have a look there. And then there's this other example, um, which I just want to show you. Can you see my screen now? Hopefully, actually, you probably can't. Let me just share it again. And I'll see if I can get this one up. Let's do that. Right. So with this one here, this is Pennybont Primary School, which is in Bridge End in Wales. And they wanted to build that culture of connection. Um, and they were also worried about how it would be for kids returning to school. So, you know, we think about transition as being, you know, starting a whole new school, but transitions are everywhere, aren't they? They're just changes in how we manage change in a situation. So what they've done here is they've created a 360 uh, tour of the school. So that these are just thing links that have been linked back together. And in every classroom where pupils can wander around the school, there are hidden messages from the pupils and this is the teacher singing in Welsh um, saying welcome to your classroom and the reason that the whole school got together and produced this is because they really wanted to make sure that their children retained their love for their place and space there excuse me <coughs> their classroom which they which they know and love and it's really important that they don't lose touch of what it looks like and their teacher and you know there's a million one things going on at the moment so for them to have this to explore and to to, to go around and have a look has just been absolutely fantastic um and this has given so many other local authorities ideas um and globally, we're seeing people use ThingLink for that transitions and, and those cho choice boards has been really, really popular. So I'm just going to come back on and uh, remove my screen there. Um, some really nice um, comments there. So there's one here around uh, GDPR. So um, basically, 
um, Thinglink is GDPR compliant. And here you are not posting videos of pupils that sit on YouTube. So you can actually create thing links now in your South Lanarkshire organization, which are not shared out with South Lanarkshire. So with um, thing link, you've got granular permissions to be able to do that as well. So if you wanted to create a private thing link that was only viewable with the link, you can do that. And you can also collaborate with fellow teachers on thing links in South Lanarkshire. So um, that's probably um, what I would say around this. It is going to give you a, a degree of kind of confidentiality. It's up to you guys if you, you know, what, what you want to kind of advise internally about what happens in South Lanarkshire and, and YouTube, but certainly you've got more control within ThingLink and it is GDPR compliant as well. Karen, is there anything you want to add on that? Well, well, just to say, Louise, it's, it's now a good time to kind of talk about the fact that we, we have looked that we are investing in, in giving some access to schools with regards to ThingLink. Yes, so um, I'm, we're going to have a, a chance to create uh, our very own ThingLink in a second. So the way that ThingLink works is that you can sign up for a free account and any teacher can do that. But it's a, it's a bit like having a consumer Gmail account. Uh, the teacher's on their own. They're not part of a school, so they can't collaborate with other teachers. Um, and with that, you get a limited amount of views. So you get a thousand views of your ThingLink. Um, and, and the reason that's there is to, to, to combat abuse of ThingLink. As I mentioned, we're a tiny company, but we're punching our, over our way and playing with the big boys. There's only 14 of us in the whole company, Ula and myself. Ula's in California, I'm in Scotland, and there's another person in Finland, and the rest of, rest of the team are kind of beavering away in the development offices. Um, so yeah, it's 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 not designed. It's 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 not um, a big kind of money making machine for education. I guess is what I want to say. And that the main revenue comes from the big e-learning uses of ThingLink and the big kind of marketing and editorial. So, for example. Um, like Arsenal Football Club have been using it recently to introduce their players. I've actually put the example in the Google Doc because it's great. But again, they want millions of views. So with a, a, a free account, you get all the functionality. You can't use 360 video, but you're on your own. Then there's a classroom teacher account, which again is a teacher that's on their own and they can add students in. Um, and they get 12,000 views and they're sitting on their own still. But then there's an organization account, which is... Well, it's at like £1.50 per user per year. And what that means is, is that you're all part of South Lanarkshire. You've got your GDPR compliance and P PIAs have been completed so that South Lan can give it the big green light. And also you can create folders and share with other teachers in South Lanarkshire. So you're truly part of an organisation. And uh, then if someone leaves, then obviously their content can be retained as well, because with single accounts, um, obviously that stays with the person. But if it's a South Lanarkshire account, then you're actually within the organisation. So does that help to answer the question? I don't know if you want to add any more yeah. about the man. And I think so. We have invested in a few hundreds of these seats and uh, I'm going to be sending out some information to schools in terms of how, how you can get a seat. And um, we've got some people already on board and, and they're uh, they're doing some stuff with it. Um, so, for example, I, I can see Brian's on the call today. So we have Bigger High School have already kind of started their, their thing link for their transition projects in terms of um, what the school looks like and introducing the head teacher and so on. So um, they're already uh, doing some great work with that. Um, but but I know there's some other other people out there desperate to get their hands on these seats. So yes, there is information coming about that. Brilliant and super super simple. So literally, you get the South Lanarkshire code. You sign up for your account, and then you enter in your invite code, and then you'll be part of the organisation. Brian, we are a Teams app, so yes, you can embed your um, thing link beautifully in your Teams channel. Um, in likewise, if you create a thing link, you can embed Sways perfectly um, and other Microsoft tools. You just need to make sure you've got the sharing permissions right. So yeah, team, Teams is the, the kind of main way in which we interact. Um, Glow is a different story, and I am working with RM to see if we can get thing link in Glow as a Teams approved app. Yeah, yeah. That's but I think 
great, great sharing permissions as well. We've got a, a Google site for our, our new SLC staff learning centre, Louise, and um, so you, you know that we've actually put a, a thing link in there and yeah, it works really nicely. Fabulous. So shall I show you how easy it is to create your yeah, thing list? Please do. Uh, this is always embarrassing because I then have to choose an image from my um, my hard drive or, or the destination and I have to make sure that I haven't got any embarrassing pictures. <laughs> or I had one of my toe which I was sending to my doctor because I couldn't get to the Anyway, right, I, I digress. Let me go back to my screen and um, I show you, Karen. Add to the stream and there we go so now i'm going to take you so i've got my thing link here that you saw me work on and i'm just going to go right out and i'm going to um just log out and i'll show you where you would go if you were going to let's take me back there so um here we go so when you go to thinglink.com forward slash edu this is what you're going to see and once you've been given your South Lanarkshire account you can click start now and don't use the sign up services because you haven't got single sign on set up but you would enter in your name uh, create your password create account and then enter in the South Lanarkshire um code that you've been given so that's not the screen that you want to see there let me just come out of that i'll start that again right so right oh link.com edu there we go right so um once you've got your account and you want to go back in and log in so you click log in and it should remember your credentials and then click login. And when you log in for the first time, you won't see all this. These are folders that have been shared with you. So these are like kind of Google Drive or OneDrive folders. These are ones that have been shared with you and you can create your own folders. Um, at the top here, you've got a welcome section and this has got some nice project ideas. There's also a 360 degree image library. And these are ones that we bought and provided for you. We have the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, for example. These Northern Lights are one that we did for a Christmas um, giveaway where we had these fantastic images. And you can copy any of these by uh, clicking clone and then it's your thing link um, to create. So yeah, lots of nice examples there already. There's also an explore function, and these are ones that the community have already started sharing. So do have a look around because you might find that there's some nice thing links that have already been created and you can actually search for um, topics. Um, you'll also see that there's a courses function and this is really active um, where you've got schools or authorities that maybe don't have classroom or teams. You can actually create your own courses. Um, so it's a workflow tool. But if you're using classroom, I would use the share to classroom function. Um, and then you've also to the right got this ever present create button. And that's the bit I'm just going to show you now. So when you click create, you can upload an image, upload a video, upload a 360 degree image or a 360 degree video. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna upload an image. And here's some images that I've got already. So I am going to upload this funny picture of Donata Castle. And that is now ready for me to add tags. Now it doesn't matter whether you upload an image, a video or a 360 image, the tag editor is exactly the same. So you get exactly the same kind of um, feel and you don't need to learn to do something differently if you're using it with image or video. So that's my base media that I've um, uploaded here onto my thing link. And the good thing is, is that if I added in a ton of tags here and then I thought, I found an even better picture of Donata Castle. You can switch out the background as well without losing your tags, which is just fantastic. On the left here, you can see I can add my tag. I've got settings and then a done button. Super simple. Add the tag and then I can position the tag wherever I want it to be. And you can see here, as I mentioned before, there's different tag types. There's text and media, and that's any combination of text and media 
And that's the bit that will open up an immersive reader if you have text there. You can add a plain text label. So I could just say that this is Darnotta Castle. And that's that's just a, a plain sort of text label that I can put in as well. But that that icon there is a bit boring, isn't it? So what you can do as well is you'll see that there's about 300 or so different icons that have been uploaded for you. So I've just changed that to an eye and then it gives me different color options to a nice green eye. But also the cool thing here is that you can create your own icons. So I created icons of my team <laughs> and made a happy birthday thing link for um, Ula, who's the founder. And then you can see that I just made all these little custom icons as well. And that's really easy to use and um, easy to do. So. I've done a video on how to create these using Google Drawings. You literally create your drawing, add in the image, download it as a different type of file. It's an SVG graphic or scalable vector graphic. And then you just upload the icon and you created your own icons. And these will stay with you as they're your account, um, not with the thing link. And then I click done and then I've got a tag there. So that's done. So I'm going to add a different tag now and I'm just going to pop this over the castle there and I'm going to add a text and media tag. And this is where I can be a bit more meaty with my content. So I've got the castle description and actually what I could do is do a Wikipedia search or something like that for Donata Castle. Here we go. And then I can maybe just take this text Take the text, there we go. And I'm gonna add that into my description. And you can now see that I've got a text label and this is the description text that will open up in Immersive Reader. I can add a call to action button. Um, so I could send people to a web page, or I could send them to a classroom or I could send them somewhere else. Actually, just for, for my one here, what I might do is just add in the Wikipedia page, put that button there, and then I can change the text and just say wiki page. There we go. Um, so I've put in text, uh, the, the title there, and I've put in a call to action button. And here I can add in further images and video if I wanted to. So I could upload other types of images. So here is um, just a, an image that I was using earlier on which is uh, actually an image of a ThingLink um, icon. And I can add in multiple images there and they play as a carousel. But if I just wanted to add in images, I could just add in images and not have this text and it will just play as images. And this is where teachers have been adding in GIFs or little video clips of themselves speaking. So that 10 gigabyte limit for the video is for the base media, it's not for the tag. Um, that's about 25 meg, but that's more than enough for you to do a talking pet or a, a little kind of emoji type thing. Um, you'll also see on the left here that I can upload audio. So I can upload an MP3 file, but I can also record my voice directly into this as well. So you don't need to go off to a different app to record your voice. So if you think about you know, a learn your group of learners that are engaging with this image. You've now got the ability to add in a little video about Donata Castle. You've got some text about the castle. You can send people off to a different page. You can even add in audio. You could even have GIFs there or a video. So it's just created a, a whole new kind of way of adding in content. Um, I might change the icon again. That's a little bit boring. So actually I'll just put a nice question mark and click done. So now I've got those two tags um, and I'm gonna add in a third tag, which is gonna be content from a website. So this could be content from a website, but it could also be the embed code from a Google form, a Sway, Flipgrid, Padlet, Scratch, any, any kind of tool that you can embed, but you can just pop in a web link. So for example, I've got that web link that I actually sent people off, but I could just post the URL in here. And then people don't even have to go off the page to the website, that will just work nicely directly embedded in. I find this really, really good for YouTube embeds. So you don't need to send people off to YouTube, 
they can have the video playing directly in the thing link um, and teachers find that really, really helpful. So Vimeo works great. Google Maps works great. Uh, slides work brilliantly. Google Slides. So just make sure you publish your slides and then you put the publish URL in there. And again, I can change my icon if I want to click done. So the last tag, which I'm just going to show you, is the tour tag. And this is how people are creating those fantastic tours. So I'm now going to create a tour. And what I'm going to do is select a th another thing link I've created. So here is a Google Doodle thing link that I created. But it could be a 360. It could be um, a video thing link. It could be anything like that. And actually, then you could choose an icon which is uh, clearly kind of plain play icon. Let's do a nice yellow one there. Great, and I can click done. And now when people click on that tag, it will take them to that next thing link. Couple of things, nice tips and tricks for you. So if you didn't like that blue kind of color scheme, you can change your color scheme into anything you want. You can set your tags to pulse so that they really draw people's attention to where those tags are. You can hide the logo if you want to. Um, some people might prefer not to have the logo because they feel that you might be advertising a product. If you were to put this onto a website, absolutely fine if you want to hide the logo. Um, and then you can see at the bottom there, it's got scenes um, or, or like this bigger full screen. So when it's published, people can make it full screen. You can also upload audio or record your voice directly into it that will play throughout the whole thing link. And um, that's different from the audio in the tag as well. So I'm gonna click done and then done again. And there you have it. That's how quick and easy it was for me to create my thing link. And if I want to share it with the world, I would just click on the, uh, first of all, check the settings. So here I've got that set to public, but you will have an organization level so you can publish it just within your South Lanarkshire organization. And that's for people that have created accounts in this kind of tenancy and got the code from Karen. But you can see here, you can have it unlisted and you can also have it as private. You can change the image title there as well. And then once you're ready, you can hit the share button. And this is the code that you can embed onto a Google site. You can embed in your Sway. Uh, sorry, not in Sway. Uh, you could embed on a, a Teams channel. Um, there's lots, lots of places you can embed it there. You've also got share link. So you've got a shareable link. And that's a unique link to that scene sorry that's the uh 153 coming from glasgow queen street to inverness um you can publish it to social directly so here you have your shared classroom icon and you can also share directly to teams and then of course you can push out to your social media accounts that might be linked and that will actually work on twitter as well so it will become an interactive um image on twitter and as download offline function as well. So because you've got an organization account, that means that if you've got people who are using PC or Mac, they can actually download this and this will work offline. So I'm gonna click close on that one now. One last thing to show you is that I have more actions here and uh, this enables you to move it into a folder. So I could move it into a folder that I called Donata Castle, for example, and I've got permission level um, access so I could add in Karen, I could add in Brian um, to be collaborative uh, editors on that folder. Um, you can replace the background, but what you've also got is really powerful is that you've got statistics. So you can see how many tags, how many times it's been embedded, which tags have been clicked on and for how long, which is um, really important as well. Um, so I'm just gonna stop there and I'm gonna come back uh, into the screen and um, lovely to see lots of comments coming through. It's super easy. Um, you can't set a new default icon, Brian, but it's really easy to, um, yeah, to, to create those icons and then just click on them when you want to change them. One of the things that I've seen done really nicely is for differentiation and choice boards. So 
one teacher has got a choice board and it's got different activities in which she sends out to the whole class and they're graded by the colors so like the red pen means it's harder than the blue pen for example so you might want to think quite cleverly about how you use those icons but certainly yeah you've got a whole world of possibilities there as well I think as well, Louise, um, people obviously talking about just that idea of everything being in the one place. And I, I, I do think that's really quite important when time is, is kind of precious as well with kids so that they're not distracted going off into all, all these other areas. So, so yeah, that was a good point from Annabelle there. Yeah, definitely. And changing the background as well has been really popular. So, you know, if you did um, change the background of your classroom, um, for example, um, you know, you took a better picture than you've got now. You can just switch out the background as well. Um, I, I'm just loving, I really want to show you Midlothian. Um, they've done a map of the whole of Midlothian and they've got like a legend. They created a legend for their icons as well. And you can, I, just, I don't think Colin's published it yet, but that's Colin McCabe from Midlothian. Um, I'm happy to add it to that Google Doc list when he's finished it. That's but great. he's got the map and then you can just click on the, the associated school groups. So you click on, I don't know, uh, Les Mahagor and it'll pop up with another thing link with all the primary schools on. And then you click on the primary school and then it goes into the 360 tour of that primary school. And yeah. it just scoops everyone up and brings them under the banner of this kind of overarching image of all the schools and I, I just love the visual nature of this it brings me joy to see things like this rather than just squeeze and squeeze of text that's a short yeah, sorry yeah that's the soap bar going past me. Um, and I think we can also see that our South Lancashire colleagues are just loving stats my goodness they love their stats yeah. <laughs> so we do have a roadmap um for thing link and it would be remiss of me not to highlight some of the things that we've got planned um so the first thing is is that we're going to create our own question tag um and that has been in the pipeline for a while you can embed a google form you can embed a microsoft form but people just wanted quick kind of poll tags so that's coming it's already in our beta um so that if people like data that's another way to um, think about uh, gaining data, collecting data from a thing link. Um, multiple uploads of 360s. So where this is being used heavily for transition, we've had a number of schools that have asked if they can upload 60 360s all at once um, because they've been taking lots of images on a camera and that's coming as well. So that's bulk upload, um, which is heavily requested. And the last thing on our roadmap um, is, is dependent on kind of developer investment, but we've started a prototype, which is a chatbot um, integrated into the thing link so that for, for truly kind of remote learning um, and anytime, anywhere learning, there's a chatbot that pupils can interact with that teachers can program and then it will take them to different scenes or to different tags and that's that's a great idea for the future. But as I mentioned, we're a small company um, with with lots with with a, with a great with great ideas and a great product. And yeah, we'll probably need some more developer time and money for that. But it's it's in our it's in our roadmap. Yeah, it sounds all all sounds really really interesting, Louise. Terrific. So I don't know that we've got any more questions. Um, I see that that Ian Ian's um, posted about using Google Drawings for different backgrounds. Yeah, and Canva's really popular as well. So uh, quite a few people are using like uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides for backgrounds. Canva, people use a lot. So for creating map layouts, um, and they find that, uh, that that's quite nice because you can download a Canva into a JPEG and then just upload it. Um, yeah, some great, great ideas. Um, not even just maps, but, you know, that whole kind of infographic and just bringing it to life. Um, Pam Curry, who some of you know and love um, from Scottish Education, she created an infographic with Greta Thunberg. And you can click on all the points and um, hear Greta talk about some of the work that she's been doing. So, yeah, lots of really nice examples there as well. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so, and and absolutely, someone's posted there about the potential for staff, children, parents and carers. So at the moment, obviously, um, we're focusing on staff. Um, maybe a little bit further down the road, we'll, we'll start to look at, um, you know, getting kids on board with this. But but for now, we're kind of focusing on the staff element. And and as I've say, I said at the beginning, we, we will be in touch soon with regards to how you get your hands on our, our code to get your own, um, your own seat for our organisation. Um, I guess the other thing that's probably worth me mentioning, so you saw that I created a What is Thing Link video, and I've also got a how to create a Thing Link, which is embedded in the slides, which is about 10 minutes long. But, you know, why don't you and Ian or others, you know, you can create your own video Thing Links, um, upload them, and then add in your own hotspots. But I'm really happy to give you any of my videos. Um, I've got a local YouTube channel, um, but, you know, if you want the raw video to upload and create your own thing links out of those videos, then that's a great idea. Ian's great. just mentioned visual CVs. Yeah, there's some really lovely examples. And I'll let you into a little funny story. When I um, approached ThingLink and, and said that I really wanted to kind of do some work with them, I created my own visual CV, which is just a picture of, um, some some pupils all collaborating at the same time that I absolutely loved and then put in hotspots to my my Google Docs CV and um, other images that um, showed me at work and I'm sure that that was quite a nice way of being able to say that I really loved it. Visualizing skill sets is really you know we've talked a lot yeah. about visual CVs and doing those with Google Site Learner journeys and producing those wonderful kind of um, Canva-based images. But imagine if a, if a young person can then articulate their skill set actually on that image with, with ThingLink. That's a great example. And, and as always, you know, I'm not going to be a stranger. And if you've got any examples you want me to showcase, I'm only too happy to do that. Well, that, that would be great. And and there there's an offer to anyone uh, who's watching today who's be, going to leave inspired to go and get started with their thing link. And um, we would love to be able to showcase what we can do with it. And and a phrase that I'll take away from today, Louise, is socially rich. Um, and I, I think if we're thinking about visual CDs for, for uh, CVs for kids, um, this is the kind of media that they're, they're used to engaging with. And that's how they're going to want to showcase the, themselves as well. So um, I thought that was a really nice phrase. I will definitely be pinching that. But yeah. um, so I think if we've not got any other questions, just people dying to get started with it, which is great to hear, um, just leaves me to say a huge thank you to you, Louise, um, for today. And yeah, you will not be a stranger. We'll definitely be getting you back, hopefully, to to continue with um, what we're going to do with this fabulous new platform for us. And I will share the, the materials that, that you've posted today. I'll get that out to schools. Yeah. But um, just to say that, it, that this has been recorded today and we have an SLC staff learning site, which hopefully most of you now are aware of. Um, it is in the local authority launch pad on GLOW. And there is a section in the digital part of that for live streams and webinars. And that is where you will find this recording so that you can perhaps you know, take it to your colleagues, watch it back and um, and take it from here. So thanks again, Louise. That, that was terrific. Oh, thanks to you, Karen. And thank you to everyone um, in Southland and um, very much look forward to working with you in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Speak soon. Okay. Thanks, bye. Everyone. bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. bye.